Train your mind muscle. As athletes and coaches, we're always trying to come up with new kind of tricks and strategies and methods to improve performance. And this can be through, you know, supplements and um, research and different kind of methodologies of, of training and all, all these kinds of things. Although these are obviously useful tools, they can also be very complicated and stressful. The best athletes in the world know that sport is 90% above your shoulders. And what I mean by that is it's, it's in your mind. Like top performing athletes are the best at being able to control their own thoughts and their own uh, mindfulness. You've often probably heard that, um, you know, physical ability obviously can make such a big difference. You know, talented players, you know, can be the difference between, you know, good and great. However, what separates, you know, even the great from the, the goats, the greatest of all time, is actually their mentality. And we know Kobe Bryant's Mamba mentality, LeBron James, um, even Conor McGregor's, to be honest, uh, there's a plethora of AFL guys, um, so many top, top athletes we can keep going, Federer, Ronaldo, like, it's, it's huge. These are obviously all talented individuals, but what separates these guys is their, is their mindset and their mindfulness. A strong mind creates a strong body. The mind is the leader of the body. One way to kind of develop, um, I guess, this mental strength can be through meditation. Now, meditation is often seen as like a bit of a, a different kind of practice, you know, maybe, maybe for only soft people, maybe only for the yogis, maybe for the hippies. But meditation is for everyone. Everyone should be doing some form of meditation and mindfulness. The very best athletes all know that some kind of mindfulness and mind training can help them prepare, perform, and recover. Preparation. So meditation can help with focus. So do you often ever find it hard to kind of concentrate either at training or during a game, or even really struggle to, to pay attention during a game or training? Um, do, you, do you find it hard to kind of focus on your role? You know, being dialed in can be the difference between hitting a game winner and uh, having a game costing turnover. Thankfully, meditation can be very helpful. It's actually been shown to improve focus even in high stress situations. So practicing meditation off the field can help you sharpen your focus on the field. Another way um, that meditation can help from a preparation point of view is through memory. So long-term meditation has been shown to improve sustained gamma activity. So gamma activity is basically, you know, the brain waves that help us um, process information, um, help us with basic focus and memory retention. So improving these areas of the brain can help you um, uh, prepare for your games in, I guess, a different way. So it's like a way of almost studying. You can prepare either for your opponent, prepare what you were going to do. So meditation can help you really hone in and sharpen what you need to do in a game before you even get on the field. Okay, performance. So reaction time is obviously really important. You know, um, it's a large component of, of agility. Yes, you need to be able to quickly change direction and be strong enough to do that, but a lot of agility is about reaction time and your cognition, how you react to the external stimulus. And meditation has been shown to improve this kind of transition time between one attention to the next. Um, in other words, reacting, how well you can react. Mental grit or resilience. Um, so all too often, you know, athletes can get caught up overthinking. Um, and when we overthink, especially in um, really fast, high intensity situations, it, it really can almost like stagnate our ability to react and make a decision. 
And often, often um, not making a decision is usually the worst decision that you can make. So by meditating and helping you stay a little bit more present and allow you to react and make better decisions you know, in certain circumstances. Recovery. So heart rate variability is basically the variation between time between each beats, between each heartbeat. So this variation is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. This nervous system can be broken into two systems, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Basically, the sympathetic is fight or flight, and the parasympathetic is rest and digest. So when you're playing sport or you're training really hard, the sympathetic nervous system is kicked in, that's your fight or flight. Um, we need to be able to balance that out with some rest and digest. Because training hard is, is obviously great, but where we adapt and get better is through the rest and digestion. So we need to be able to swing from um, a higher sympathetic nervous system drive back to a more parasympathetic nervous system drive. And meditation has been shown to make this transition a lot easier. So going from like a hard training session, switching back down to this rest and recovery state, medica meditation can help with that can also help with pain management. So getting injured or just being banged up from playing sport, it's, it's pretty, pretty commonplace. With, uh, meditation, with meditation, you can actually train your body to deal with the intensity of pain a lot better and even just like the general unpleasantness of pain. So you become a little bit more pain tolerant. And the last one is sleep. And obviously sleep is one of the best forms of recovery in my opinion anyway. So you can either use um, meditation practice to kind of um, help you improve your ability to switch off, or you can actually meditate before you go to sleep as a way to help you go to sleep. And that'll actually help improve your sleep quality, improve your sleep quality, improve your overall recovery. So meditation, fantastic. It helps us with all those things. How do we get started? Now, you don't need to go and spend 12 months in Tibet um, with the monks to learn how to meditate. It's more than accessible these days. There's so many apps out there that you can use. Um, in my opinion, the best one is, is Headspace. Um, it comes free. You can use the, the, the free functions in Headspace, which is really good. But over time, you'll probably find that you want a little bit more, um, some more variety or look at some different areas. And that's where you can just pay for a subscription, which in my opinion, pays for itself pretty quickly. So to start, simply download an app. Um, find a quiet place, choose a time and a location that is very convenient for you and that is that is quiet, where you're not going to be disturbed. Try and keep this pretty consistent. Now, it doesn't have to be this place and time all the time, but to kind of create the habit of meditation, it is a lot more beneficial if it's at the same time and in the same location. It just makes it a lot easier for you um, if you've got that same kind of regularity, because then you know this is, you can schedule it into your day and you know that you're not going to be disturbed and you can put 100% kind of focus into your, your meditation, your mindful um, practice. Meditation isn't just for yogis and monks. Everyone can benefit from a regular meditation practice. All you have to do is find a quiet place and start.